TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The Islamist Hamas organization claims that its primary victory in its war against Israel was the thwarting of normalization and coexistence between Arabs and Jews. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken embarks on a three-day tour of the Middle East aimed to consolidate the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The European Union confirms that substantial progress has been achieved in the indirect nuclear talks between the United States and Iran in Vienna. Despite tensions gradually alleviating following the Egyptian-brokered ceasefire between the Islamist organizations in the Gaza Strip and Israel, efforts by certain elements to revive the violence on the ground are seemingly relentless. While limited riots were reported at a number of points of friction across the West Bank and Jerusalem over the weekend, the latest incident occurred earlier today when a Palestinian assailant stabbed two Israelis at a light rail stop near Jerusalem's police headquarters, which is situated in the eastern part of the city. Police officers immediately responded by opening fire and neutralizing the attacker. The two Israelis, one of them an IDF soldier, sustained light to moderate injuries. They were both evacuated to a nearby hospital for further treatment. Meanwhile, in the Qatari capital of Doha, Hamas political chief Ismail Haniyeh declared in an acclaimed victory speech broadcast on Palestinian television that the recent conflict between his Islamist group and Israel served as a so-called quantum leap in the battle against the Jewish state. Moreover, Haniyeh, who resides in Qatar, which sponsors Hamas as the Palestinian offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, asserted that the main victory pertains to the defeat of the Israeli aspiration to realize coexistence and normalization of relations between Jews and Arabs. مع الاحتلال الصهيوني أسقطت مشاريع التطبيع مع الاحتلال الصهيوني ولذلك المقاومة الخيار الاستراتيجي الأقرب للتحرير والعودة Hania further seized the opportunity to thank Egypt for brokering the ceasefire Qatar for its diplomatic backing and Iran for their relentless support for the Islamist organizations in Gaza by means of money, weapons and technical support it is important to highlight that beyond the acknowledged support to the Islamist organizations in Gaza, the Islamic Republic of Iran had also launched an armed unmanned aerial vehicle toward Israel last week on Tuesday in a failed attempt to penetrate Israeli airspace from the country's eastern neighbor Jordan. While the IDF confirmed the attempted breach on the day of the incident, it was during a meeting with visiting German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, in which Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu unveiled the Iranian origins of the UAV. The true backer of uh, much of this aggression is Iran. Iran not only supports completely the uh, Islamic Jihad in Gaza and gives them all the financing, they also give weapons to uh, Hamas as well as to Hezbollah, and they, they provide the scaffolding on which these organizations uh, really work. Uh, while we were engaged in these hostilities uh, a few days ago, Iran sent an armed drone uh, to Israel from Iraq or from Syria. Iranian forces launched a drone, armed drone, which our forces intercepted uh, on the border between Israel and Jordan. Uh, and that, I think, tells, says everything on uh, the true patron of terror in the Middle East and uh, in the world, Iran. Meanwhile in Washington, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki highlighted that U.S. President Joe Biden is now focused on contemplating a way forward with an apparent aim of ending the decades-old conflict between the Palestinians and Israel. 
So uh, the president's view is that, and his view from the beginning, was that through disciplined, intensive, and quiet, and a disciplined, intensive, and quiet campaign of diplomacy, uh, and one where we would lead coordination in the region, we could bring an end to the conflict more quickly than it was intended to be. And it's also important to remember that Hamas is a terrorist organization that uh, Israel, of course, continues to have the right to defend itself. But what's most important from now uh, forward, in his view, is uh, to, to um, contemplate uh, where we go from here. Following the voiced intention from the White House, which was made on Friday, the U.S. State Department announced today Secretary of State Antony Blinken's scheduled intention to travel to Jerusalem, Ramallah, Cairo and Amman at the behest of President Biden. The top American diplomat will initially depart for Jerusalem to discuss essential follow-up efforts to consolidate the ceasefire and reduce risks of further conflict over the coming months. It is important to note that the visit by Secretary Blinken also coincides with reported progress on the Iran nuclear file in the talks in Vienna, which is a major issue of concern in Jerusalem. According to the European Union's political director Enrique Mora, who chairs the meetings in Vienna, the fourth round of negotiations, which include indirect talks between Tehran and Washington, have made substantial progress. We have made substantial progress this over the last 10 days, but there are still things to be worked on. We are still very committed, all the delegations, and me as, as coordinator, I can tell you that the spirit of compromise is high. They are all very committed to an agreement which in our mind is key to the non-proliferation architecture, to the regional stability in the wider Middle East and to international peace and security. Despite challenges remaining, which evidently pertain to Iran's demands that the U.S. lifts all sanctions, including those which are not related to the nuclear deal, the EU coordinator to the talks is convinced that a final agreement will soon be realized. I will not venture a, a date because you never know, but I'm quite, quite sure that there will be a final agreement, yeah, not, not far from here. Elsewhere in the Austrian capital, International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi confirmed that he reached an agreement with Iran to extend a temporary agreement to allow for continued monitoring of some activities within the Islamic Republic's nuclear facilities. We agreed, uh, number one, that the information collected by our uh, technical equipment uh, in at, at different locations uh, in Tehran um, is uh, going to be uh, saved um, and um, will continue to be uh, under the custody of the agency uh, uh, at every site where it is at the moment. This is uh, number one. And uh, number two, that the equipment and the verification and monitoring um, activities that we agreed um, will continue uh, as now as they are now for one month expiring then on June uh, 24 2021 the current temporary agreement between the IAEA and Iran in fact does not grant the nuclear watchdog any access to the nuclear installations in question but rather allows technical tools to collect data from the facilities. And while the accumulated data is stored and kept by the IAEA's own protected servers within the Iranian nuclear installations, inspectors do not and will not have any access to the data unless the 2015 nuclear agreement currently deliberated in Vienna will be revived. I think we should all be reminded of the fact that these uh, temporary technical understanding is a sort of a stopgap measure, is something that we came up with as a way to avoid, uh, as I was um, saying before, uh, flying completely blind, losing essential information to uh, allow us, uh, hopefully, uh, if those levels of access are restored for us, so that we can uh, reconstruct what may have been happening. 
Grossi also revealed that as part of the extension of the technical understanding with Iran, the accumulated data from the Islamic Republic's nuclear installations will be kept safe after unveiling that the previous agreement intended for the collected data to be erased unless the nuclear agreement would have been revived within Tehran's aspired three months period. One um, thing that we, have, we had agreed on back in February was that at the expiration of the technical understanding, the information would be erased. And this is not going to happen. Grossi was further asked whether the IAEA is concerned by the pending presidential elections in Iran, which may harden the stance of the Islamic Republic vis-à-vis -vis the West. So I'm not worried and I'm confident that whoever comes next will, of course, continue uh, co cooperating with the IAEA. I think it's in everybody's interest. The Iranian presidential elections, which are scheduled for June the 18th, include 40 candidates, all of which have been approved by the Islamic Republic's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. Despite threats directed at the West regarding Tehran's potential change of heart regarding the nuclear agreement once a new president is elected, it is important to be reminded that the president merely serves as an advisor to the supreme leader, who is the ultimate decision maker. Thank you for watching us. I would like to encourage you to join TV7 Israel and me in fervently praying for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel, alongside prayers for the salvation and peace of Sri Lanka, as well as for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.